top 10 NFL tight ends, 5 to 1. 2016 edition. Number 5, Antonio Gates, age 37. So, Antonio Gates, age 37, still just a future Hall of Famer, of course. But what a, just, what a dude, man. Like, first of all, it's been, the past years has been rough for him. Uh, only starting four games, getting to play 11 in, 20, in 2015. And then 2016 here, only started nine, played in 14 games. And he still is able to get a lot of quality numbers. And that's a big reason Jason Witten to Antonio Gates, that's what they're splitting at. Jason Witten is younger than Antonio Gates. But the thing with Witten is he's played in every pretty much every game. And he has getting his numbers down due to slowness. Antonio Gates, he still can produce almost as much as what Jason Witten did in 16 games. Only in 9 games starting and 14 games playing. So in less games, and he's just been more valuable to his team. He's always been a valuable to, value to his team. Uh, and he's a future Hall of Famer. Future... Charger to be retired is number, of course. I don't think anybody should wear 85, actually, in San Diego once this guy's gone. Uh, this guy transcended the tight end position like Ozzie Newsome, like Kellen Winslow did back when he was a Charger. Chargers have always had pretty good tight ends, to be quite honest with you. It's pretty impressive. I'm glad uh, that, you know, he's been able to play all these years and a, and a guy that pretty much tried out for the team and got on. And look at him. Look at him now. He is a star in the making. Of course, he's always been a star. Um, never appreciated enough, you know. He was always a star in the making. You know, he's a future Hall of Famer. He's just, he produced all the time and he's always been overlooked. It, he's never really been that guy with the spotlight. And I feel like he's never really wanted it that much. But at the same time, I feel like he didn't have as much attention as a Jason Wynn had before or, you know, any of those guys because he was playing for San Diego, a team that didn't get much acknowledgement, I guess. And I feel like he's in L.A. now, a bigger city. He will definitely get some acknowledgement, of course. But it, it's just coming too late. I feel like he should have had this when he was, you know, 25, 26, like he should have had started having this kind of recognition of it. Even 24, like when he had those 81 reception year season over there, he should have had that kind of like that kind of impact. People should have known who Antonio Gates was and his impact and everything. But it is what it is. He's a feature Hall of Famer. No matter how you look at, very overlooked guy and a superstar for years. He's been a superstar four years and. Um, you know, um, earns him a top five because he still has it. At 37, he's still got it, and he's going strong. And that's what's very amazing for me to see. And I'm so happy to see him play once again. Um, I take it with, like, um, I don't take this talent for granted. I love watching all players that really bring it every single Sunday. And I love watching him play. Right now his year, his statistics, 14 games he played, 9 he started. 53 receptions for 548 receiving yards, 10.3 per reception. That's how many yards he got. Seven receiving touchdowns, 27 was long. His average game, 39.1, and he had one fumble. Haven't been in the playoffs since 2013, so he has had to see some pretty ugly, ugly years from San Diego. The fumble that he caused um, didn't get recovered. Other than that, I mean, what can you say? Um, hasn't been in all pro since 06. I feel like he should be in the Pro Bowl. Hasn't been there since 2011. I think he's been snubbed a little bit. I just, like I said, he's been overlooked a lot. Um, and, I mean, like I said, like overall, he's sixth in receiving touchdowns, you know, seventh in, or 33rd in receiving yards, seventh right now active. Um, and he's 22nd in career receptions, you know. Um, Honestly, he's just overlooked, but he's a star. He's an awesome guy to watch, and I've always enjoyed watching Antonio Gates. And uh, keep doing what you do. I hope you do have a 16 uh, play and start regular season next year, and I hope your numbers jump up super high. I'd love to put you higher. I think uh, you just deserve to be on this list, um, just like Jason Witten deserves to be on it. Legends and... Uh, 
I, I love you both a lot. I love watching you. Number four, Jordan Reed, age 27. And before we get to Jordan Reed, I have to just tell you that Gates's contract is one year worth $5.5 million. Take it as you will. I still think he won't retire. I still think he's got like, you know, he's still got a few years left, maybe two, three. Um, but anyway, let's take a look at Jordan Reed. First of all, Jordan Reed's contract, before I even forget again, is five years, $46.75 million. Is it worth it? Yeah, it is. Uh, former Florida Gator, uh, tight end, just a 6'3 guy that can just um, really run pretty great routes, to be quite honest with you. He's, he's pretty good at running routes. Um, and a guy that hasn't fully been playing and starting all 16 games, which is a kind of a kind of a bummer, kind of a you know borderline, is he really deserving to be top five kind of guy. But at the same time, he shows it when he's out there. Like, when he does get the opportunity, he actually does make the most out of it. He does produce well. And he's a guy that, honestly, you don't want to mess with. He, he can really produce really well. I mean, you saw it last year, 87 receptions and 11 receiving touchdowns. Like, he had those numbers. He's a great tight end. He really is. It's just he needs to stay healthy. And that's really the best advice I got for him is just stay healthy, keep working hard, because he is a really good tight end. Um, and... Uh, you know, it's nice. It's nice to see a guy coming out of Connecticut um, and just making sure he gets, you know, what he needs, which is being that superstar. And I think he is a superstar. I really think if he continues, if he gets like a 16-played, 16 16-start 16 season continuously and effectively, I think he is a superstar in my opinion. Um, and he should be borderline, you know, competing with the best out of them. Um, and I really do think he really is... Um, a star um, so that contract yes I do believe it's really well worth signing in my opinion I think they shouldn't feel bad at all I just think uh, I just wanted to be healthy I definitely do everyone does I'm sure um, he just you know hopefully he doesn't get injury prone hopefully that doesn't ruin his contract hopefully that doesn't become and make him a bust at all um, but I think he'll I think he'll definitely continue to just you know, work on, on being who he is, on being an asset to the team. I think the Redskins really need him. They really do need as much offense as they can get. And Jordan Reed is that offense, I think. Um, Kirk Cousins and Jordan Reed are actually a pretty good duo, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, um, just want to see Reed healthy. Um, now let's just take a look at his numbers because, like I said, I was impressed. So now the 12 games he played, he only started eight. But he had 66 receptions for 686 yards. 10.4 was his average reception. Six receiving touchdowns. Longest one was 33. His average game was 57.2. And he only had one fumble. Okay. Now, didn't get to the playoffs this year. The one fumble didn't get a fumble recovery. But he did make it to the Pro Bowl. And that's pretty much a big leap for him is making it to the Pro Bowl. Like I said, just very deserving of making making it into the Pro Bowl. Um, I wonder if he got to the Pro Bowl by via vote, or if it was due to an injury replacement. I'm not sure. All I know is that um, he deserves what he got, and uh, he just gotta he's just gotta come back stronger and physical and and prove that he really is a guy that um, that you want to see out there every night and. Um, like I said, Jordan Reed has the possibility of being a great tight end in this league. So, um, you know, the sky's the limit with him, and I wish him nothing but the best. Number three, Greg Olson, age 32. So, Greg Olson, very, uh, very valuable tight end. A guy that really gets overlooked, and a guy that people don't understand his value. First of all, Kelvin Benjamin, Jonathan Stewart, those guys. Those guys get a lot more credit than Greg Olson does, honestly. The line, Cam Newton. Nothing, not a single thing would have been really possible. Super Bowl 50, I mean, without the big help from Greg Olson. I think Greg Olson is a very, actually, I don't think, I know. He's a very big portion of their offense. He's a guy that really... If you really need a security blanket and you really need to get a pass out there, 
you give it to Greg Olson. Why? Because he's going to give you yards. He's going to give you something to go for, you know. He's going to give you some positive signs. They're like, all right, cool. That, it wasn't the play we drew up, but at least we got some yards with it. Now let's do something else, you know. It opens up for more guys to get open because he is a big-bodied guy. He's also a target. So you get a target like him that makes a lot of catches. Of course, they're going to start thinking he's the guy that's going to get the ball. But that leaves guys open, which is pretty good for guys that are, that are like a Kelvin Benjamin or just having Jonathan Stewart run the ball. They they won't really know when he's running it because Greg Olson is kind of that top kind of target in a way, you know. And that's that's great. But uh, it, he also helps the team as well as he's helping his statistics. You know what I mean? Um, and I think Carolina really does need to have him. I think losing him would actually be a pretty big loss. I I believe. Cam Newton would not be the same without Greg Olson. I think Greg Olson makes him look super well at times that he sometimes um, doesn't look so great in. Um, but now, Olson, two years, $15 million. So, two years for the 32 year old. I think he's going to be just fine. I think he's going to produce exactly what he's been doing um, at the level he's been doing it at. Eventually, yes. Will he run out of time? Of course he will, but I think he's still got a few more years in him to really have that, you know, that charismatic way of his and just his play style. You know, he's going to continue to produce. He really is. And like I said, it's 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 been great to see him go from Chicago, not really performing to the level he has, to just exploding in Carolina. I think bringing him to Carolina was the best thing for him. And I'm glad he went to a team. I'm glad he became such a great, like, just a really good asset to this team, you know, honestly. Um, so, yeah, no, let's first take a look at what has Greg Olson done this year. Well, he's played all 16 and started all 16. 80 receptions, 1,073 yards, 13.4 his average reception, three receiving touchdowns, 78 was his long. His average game is 67.1, and he had no fumbles. So that's a pretty good year for him. No playoffs for Carolina, of course. And um, like I said, no fumbles. So that that was that's a, that pays pretty big dividends. Um, now he won. He went to the Pro Bowl, and um, that's about it. But he went to the Pro Bowl, and he's getting recognized now a little more. It's been three straight years of him getting to the Pro Bowl, so that's very good to see. Um, and like I said, you know, he's just he's getting more, you know, more and more developed, more and more just. He's just a great go-to guy, and I'm glad he's healthy, you know. Um, a lot of issues with tight ends sometimes are definitely health. It's a big-time problem, um, and I'm glad that he's doing things. Maybe his training regimen, I'm not sure what's going on, or maybe he's just not as injury-prone as more, mo most other guys. Um, but either or, great tight end and deserves to be in the top five, number three best tight end in the league, in my opinion. Number two, Travis Kelsey, age 27. It's a very, very entertaining guy. And he's got a lot of just upside to him. He's just really entertaining. He's a really funny dude. He produces a lot. He really is a great producer. And uh, he's scary, man. He's a scary dude. Um, he just keeps getting better and better within years. And I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't even want to put him to him, number two. To be quite honest, I want to put him number one. I want to put him number one so bad because he's just continuously, he's he's healthy for the most part, and he's playing, he's just balling out, and it's just really good to see. You know, it's just really, it's a great, exciting player in the NFL. Um, it's a tight end. It's just, it's a, another guy that I'm like, whew, like he's like that coming up of like, you know, Tony Gonzalez when he was in Kansas City. Now you got Travis Kelsey out in Kansas City, you know. Like, I, I thought, mm, well, Tony, they lost Tony. You know, they were kind of struggling. They got their tight end in Kansas City. Like, Travis Kelsey is their man, you know. And they're gonna have, he's going to be their man for a while because he's got a five-year, $46.84 million contract. Boom, okay. So he's going to be there for a while unless he opts out. Now, the thing is, I love me some Travis Kelsey. I would actually put him like 1A, 
You know, that's how good he is. Like, I feel like he's, like, right there at the number one spot because of his health and how he just impacts the game. Dude, he's actually really athletic for a tight end. He really, he can run, great route runner, great catcher, just a great overall receiver. You know, he gets, he does block, you know, he's not, like, he's not weak. He's not, you know, he's not at all more of a wide out kind of guy. No, he's, he does both, you know, he tries to prove himself. He's trying to prove that he's the best tight end out there. I think he's so close to being the best tight end, tight end out there. If number one, if that number one starts dipping in terms of like another kind of injury kind of thing or in terms of he's missing more games, I got to put Travis Kelsey number one. You know, I got to drop that number one guy a little bit more than just number two. Just because, just because of his impact and his name and everything doesn't mean... I should stay with him for a while because he's been kind of a he's been kind of a roller coaster kind of man, you know. Travis Kelsey keeps going up and up and up, and I'm enjoying Travis Kelsey every year. Um, he's just a great guy to have on fantasy. Honestly, he he helped me so much. Uh, now, anyway, let's take a look at what he's done. 16 games, started and played. He had 85 receptions for 1,125 receiving yards. 13.2 his average reception for four touchdowns. 80 was his longest one. Average game is 70.3 yards. He also had one rush for negative five yards. But he had no fumbles, so that's really good. Um, in the playoffs, play that one game against Pittsburgh. He had five years for 77 yards, 15.4 per reception, and his longest one was 24 there. So no fumbles there. Um, just... A lot of pressure that game. Pittsburgh was just too good. You know, they they were they were more ready than, than Kansas City. Kansas City couldn't score, and Alex Smith just is just keep continuously showing me why he's not the guy in Kansas City. They really do need a another QB. I think Alex Smith is a great QB in the regular season. I think he gets it done for them to get to the playoffs. But I don't know, man. I just I want to see Kansas City achieve something, but uh, the way they're going, it's not looking great. Um, it's not looking like they can actually come up, you know, um, to that Super Bowl contention. Anyway, though, Kelsey got 2016 Pro Bowl and 2016 First Team All Pro. That's huge. That's huge honor for him to get First Team All Pro. Uh, like I said, he's a guy that just wants to prove that out there that he is the best. He he is the best, and he definitely is proving that he is the best, um, in my opinion. Um, he's super close. He's super damn close to being number one. Um, and I just, you know, like I said, Travis Kelsey is the man. I enjoy him a lot. And uh, just keep doing your thing, dude. Just keep doing it, and you will just be, you'll be number one. You'll be on top of the world, tight end world, for sure. And number one, Rob Gronkowski, age 28. Rob Gronkowski is a freak he's a freak of nature he really is he's a just super athletic super ripped just a monster for sure when he gets on the field that's the problem with me in terms of me putting him you know he's definitely a top five guy I'm just not I'm not I don't like it when he has this kind of year where he goes off and then he falls off like that you know due to some injuries and that's why I'm saying, like, in the long run, how is it going to pave the way for him? Like, I understand he had some great years. Like, 2011 was a great year for him. You know, he rolled that ankle there in the Super Bowl. Not great. Uh, 2012 was, you know, he dropped down from it, but he still had a pretty good year. 2013, he definitely dropped down, only starting six games there, only playing seven. Then the next two years, 2014 and 2015, really good numbers like yeah like he's like the best tight end in the world and now he just dropped down a lot a lot from those two years and that's why it's killing me for like i don't want to put rob gronkowski down i really don't i think he's an awesome dude you know i have no you know i think he's a great guy i think he's funny um i know people think of him more as a party animal i just I think of him as just a guy that just wants to have fun as well as enjoy his life. You know, he wants to enjoy life. 
and that's what I'm trying to get at. I don't disrespect anyone. I don't disrespect anyone at all. I don't judge anyone. I'm a very open-minded person. I love Rob Gronkowski's personality. It just fits New England because Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, they're all business. I like it when there's a mixture of guys and having Gronk there, it just makes it fun. You know, it makes you like actually want to watch New England because Julian Edelman's funny and he's very just, he's charismatic. He wants to, you know, he wants to jump up and down. He wants to have fun. Rob is the same thing. He wants to have fun. I just really want to see him have that like quintessential, you know, three straight years of this, you know, where I can see like consistent play and I'm like, whoa, okay. Yeah, he truly is number one. I'm not saying he's not number one. I'm just saying there are guys that are definitely super close to being number one. And if Rob starts getting down on his numbers due to injuries, he might lose the title of being the best tight end in football. Because Travis Kelsey's just right up there, dude. He's he's improving a lot. Greg Olson has been pretty solid these past, um, you know, uh, few years and Jordan Reed is getting there Antonio Gates is getting old so I will never put him at number one because he is getting there um in age but I mean Jordan Reed Greg Olson Travis Kelsey they still have a shot of the title um but I'm going to give it to Gronk right now because yes he had an injury filled season but look at his past two years has been amazing and the other thing is um playoff wise you know I think he was a big reason they won in 2014 you know he was definitely a like Cam, Chancellor, those kind of guys. The whole secondary of Legion of Boom was injured, so I wouldn't particularly say that uh, New England won it fully. Like, I feel like if Legion of Boom was healthy, that would have been... I feel like that would have been a Seattle win, um, just because I feel like they just would have been really eager to... Like, even... With them being injured, they were so close to winning that Super Bowl. If they just, you know, I feel like they could have, they should have ran it with Marshawn Lynch. He was at that time uh, the most unstoppable back in the NFL. But like I said, Gronk is the dude that led him to a great place in that whole, you know, in that whole New England Patriot team. Um, and he's a very big contribution kind of guy. It's just. Um, with Brady, you don't really need a Gronk to win a Super Bowl. You just saw that he didn't really play in the postseason. He didn't play in the Super Bowl. They won it because Tom is great and he can use anyone. And uh, he'll make them for that one game or that one possession look like a superstar. So, you know, you don't particularly need Gronk. But um, he's very much... I feel like if he was in that game, they wouldn't have been down 25 points. I'm not going to lie. I think they would have been probably up by a touchdown or they would have been down, but not down by much. You know, um, I just think he has that impact, though. Um, and that's where you have to give him credit. Now, Gronk has three years, $27 million in his contract. So his contract is up when he is 31. Like I said, we'll see how that goes. And his stats this year, eight games he played. Six he started, though. 25 receptions for 540 receiving yards. 21.6 was his average reception. Three receiving touchdowns. Fifth three was his long. His average game is 67 and a half. And no fumbles there. Uh, which is good. Good to see that. Um, again, didn't play in the playoffs. Didn't get anything at all. And uh, Pro Bowl-wise, was in the Pro Bowl this year. Um, wasn't in all all pro uh, but he was a all pro the past two years 14 and 15 but yeah no he's a great player to watch and uh, he's scary he's a scary man um, and he's deserving of the number one spot as of right now